What's up, everybody? Welcome to Talking Again Podcast. I am your host, Fidel. This is The Tap. Thank you for tuning in, and please make sure and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to click on the notification bell. You can also find the show on all your popular podcast platforms, such as Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen. Let's get this show started. What's up, everybody? How you doing? I am your host, Fidel. This is Talking Again Podcast. In studio today, I have Cynthia Morales. Cynthia is, uh, she's my little cousin. I, I call her cousin. Lily always gives, Lily's my wife. She always gives me shit about it. She goes, those are my cousins, not yours. <laughs> and I said, no, they're my cousins too. Especially when I know, I've known you for a long, long time. I was little. You were, you were probably <laughs> five or six, maybe? Whoa, re- no, that was Adriana. No, really? Yeah, Nana was little. Okay. She had that little bowl. Cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. What, that here? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, what, eight? I guess. You're not that much older than her, are you? I'm four years older than her, yeah. Oh, so that'd be oh. like eight. Yeah. yeah. I was like older elementary. Yeah. Yeah. How is that for you? Like, you're like, damn, I, like this guy's old. Like, <laughs> no, seriously. Like, you think about it. Like, he's been in the family a long time. Yeah. When you when you think of everybody else, right? No. Nah, I mean, I just, you've always <laughs> been there. So it's not weird. Yeah. If that makes sense? Normal? Like we just it's yeah. Usual now, the usual. Yeah, you're thing. just there. <laughs> I was always there. <laughs> you were just there. Yeah. That, that makes me feel good. Yeah, and you were always trying to like be the cool boyfriend. So <laughs> Wait, trying to? I was the cool guy. I mean, guy. okay, yeah, yeah. Wasn't I? <laughs> you, that sucks because that's when you know when when all the youngsters are like, Oh, I say something. No, I you were the something. cool you were the cool guy. I try to say something funny and they're always like, Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's like that uh, that that old uh, that old uncle, you know, that always tries to be cool. No, you, you were know? actually cool. You like, we knew that you wanted to be on our good side. Yeah. But you weren't like trying super hard. Yeah. You were just yourself. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> what happened? It's the it's the 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 ghosts and the ghouls. Yeah. For, the, you know, it is it is the Halloween the Halloween time, right? Yes. So that's what we decided. You know what? I had bought decorations. And I just I remember was thinking right now that you that were gonna put like decorations. I did. Something. I had some, and then I forgot. That means that now I'm I'm forced to have a uh, maybe like a Dia de los Muertos theme podcast. podcast. It'll be I a like little that. late. It'll be like after the fact, but maybe I could do that. We have to do it quick. Yeah, November first is coming up. That's true. Like this, isn't week? it November second, the last day? I thought it was November first. I think it's November second. It starts on November first, or is it November? No, 2nd? it starts it's just October thirty first, right? I think it's 31st, the 1st, and the 2nd. Three days. Because I know there's the... We should know. I know. <laughs> it, it, we were just talking about how it's... it's part it's a, of our for, traditions. Yes. The Latino culture, we're yeah. all about the celebrating Because it like death. also intermingles with like Catholicism. Because like one day is like the day of the innocent children mm. and the, like innocent children's souls. And then the other one's like all souls wait one day of one of the, f- of I the don't know if it's the days? first or the second yeah oh, okay it's either the first or the second it's like yeah. the innocent did you children. watch coco i did <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> i love coco. i think i think a lot of people uh got a lot of their information about the other los muertos because of that <laughs> or due to that movie so oh. were the facts right i don't know i don't i'm not too much into the catholic thing i mean i i i that's, that's so i know that sounds so bad considering i'm, the, I'm your padrino i know <laughs> you're my um, confirmation yeah. sponsor thank so, you um, sorry about i that, chose but. i chose wisely yeah you did <laughs> um uh damn but it's good that you're honest about it like no, a lot yeah, of people are f- I, kind of fake about it like they'll pretend yeah. that they're you know very religious but yet they don't like practice it <laughs> no yeah and and i wish i would but it's just uh there's just so many things that i don't and i really don't want to make this a religion a religious po- podcast or episode but uh i don't know just sometimes i i uh i want to do my own thing you know i don't want to live by a book yeah so <laughs> religion in itself is a whole thing yeah but spirituality and faith is like a different thing right yeah that's so i think that's where i, I, I think I'm, I'm more like spiritual yeah that's good like he, he <laughs> him and i we know each other <laughs> he's cool we're cool yeah we're cool we're he, he listens to the show he subscribed <laughs> the other day <laughs> I hey saw. he's always watching yeah right <laughs> um so uh going into that the other los muertos um and we were talking about this off the air of how how big it is in our tradition and our culture to celebrate the dead the dead mm-hmm. i mean obviously you mourn and after that is the celebration and i don't know 
uh, how about you? How you guys do it in your family? Which I should know because I've been there so many years, right? But uh, um, as far as death, uh, with us, we would mourn, and then following that, we'd celebrate. It'd be we'd be at a party, yep, barbecue, beer, and celebrating the life of the deceased. Yeah, that's well. Or I've lack, been to lack of life. Many funerals that were not like close family, mm-hmm. but like my mom would always take us to her cousin's funerals or like people that she would know because their family's so big yeah um and it would always be like a rose like the mass rosary and then after everyone would like have food and talk about the person like it was never like a like oh we can't talk about them like, yeah, yeah. Y- that's not a thing like yeah. we would always celebrate them and mm-hmm. all the good things that they did yeah. um so that's how i grew up with it because even you can ask lily like we get dragged to those things all the time even though we never knew the person right <laughs> yeah it always do- did freak me out with the open caskets though <laughs> really why i don't know like they look like dolls yeah but it's like the body yeah, yeah, yeah. you know like my mind can't comprehend it yeah <laughs> it's just weird yeah i guess uh i can uh yeah it wouldn't scare me it just weird me out yeah <laughs> well uh I don't mind them. I don't mind them at all. I, it does. I know what I know what you're saying though, because the last uh, memory that you had of that person was totally different than watching them. Even yeah. in, like if you've ever seen them <laughs> sleep. Not that you're a weirdo and watch people sleep, <laughs> but like just that alone, like just it's different. You yeah, know? it's trippy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it, it. I guess I get it. Yeah, it's, it's just weird. weird. So you'd rather do a close close casket. Type oh of thing? no, for me personally, yeah. I want to be cremated. Oh, me too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've said it too. I said I want to be cremated. Just it's easier. I think it's easier that way. Well, it's an empty vessel. Like, what do you? Yeah, I mean, no one's gonna come visit my body. Well, <laughs> and then you know, you remember like all the, you know, there's a lot of weirdos out there. What if they want to steal your body? Yeah. Well, see, okay, my thing is like, I have I am a body. person of faith, but I oh, <laughs> 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 that's like not what I was going. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I was thinking like selling your body parts for science because uh, like I am a person of faith, but I like with that, I think that God gave us brains to, you know, have science and Mm -hmm. do all these things. So I want to donate like things that are useful if they can be used like to science, like or to someone that needs it if it's still viable. Um, And then whatever, like whatever's left, just cremate me throw right. me in a river like yeah, yeah, yeah. i don't really it's kind of like have a, a need for it, <laughs> it it's it's kind of like like a livestock <laughs> right like yeah. you know you use everything that you can and the rest just kind of make a hot dog <laughs> right <laughs> so i guess so i mean my thing all right i remember watching uh an episode of married with children okay yeah you don't right. remember that we'll see oh, we're, again the age difference well no it's not even that um my dad oh. he, like no he's he was very both, both both my parents were very like strict about what we watched oh, okay um there's a running joke in the family that we were the flanders right. which i own up to it like yeah. whatever <laughs> oh the simpsons yeah, 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 yeah. The- <laughs> but see they would use that reference and i have no idea what they were talking about because oh. we weren't allowed to watch the simpsons mm-hmm. so like you like a lot of people will do references to like the simpsons married with children and like well how about now that you're older and you could do whatever you want do you ever think about going back and or i you tried ever, you ever, yeah. i have tried it doesn't to, hold up no uh, it's not the same yeah yeah no <laughs> but then you don't have really much of a comparison because you weren't watching it back in the day yeah but i was trying to watch like the simpsons like yeah. all the old episodes like the only ones i really like are the halloween ones mm-hmm. and then like that ties back into like the whole like creepy thing and oh yeah, yeah. like i don't know yeah like that i liked but everything else i was like i don't get it mm-hmm. that's funny <laughs> well there was an episode of married with children where uh the neighbors uh i don't remember their names um they had like an aunt that was living there or something that that, that they didn't uh, much appreciate of she passed away and uh al bundy the the main character uh one of the main characters uh they had a barbecue and they ran out of uh charcoal so the daughter, the oh, no. the dumb daughter, the dumb blonde, they, you know, stereotype. Right? She was uh, to the uh, to the neighbors and grabs a bag or, oh, uh, she thought it was like a container. It was an <laughs> urn, and they use that to grill. And then they're eating the burgers. Ew. And yeah, so the the husband of the the neighbors was uh didn't like the the aunt, and he was enjoying his burger. Once he found out, he was really enjoying his burger because he you know he hated the aunt. <laughs> yeah. So I was uh, I was said it like I want. I want you guys to barbecue me. Ew. <laughs> want, but uh, then would that be called considered cannibalism? Is it? I don't think so. Because all, uh, all the meat's gone. 
<laughs> it's just the bone. <laughs> I don't know. But then also, did you hear, did you know that like not your, not all your bones get incinerated because it needs a lot of heat in order for your bones to like, you know. So become, what do they do? I don't know. That's they, like they been the them? question. I don't know. Hmm. <laughs> You'd have to ask someone who works at a cream, like a whatever, where they cream Note to self. meat bodies. <laughs> get yourself someone. I'm going to get an episode like that. I'm going to interview <laughs> someone like that. We'll get that answer. But um, yeah, no, I've, I've, I've thought about too. I want to get cremated. I just think it's easier. Yeah. I mean, I think that also goes back to like our traditions because my parents also um, have told us that they would prefer us to like, they don't have a need for it yeah. because they- Wait, your parents told you that? Huh? Your parents told you that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. They told us like, they've told us like the plan, you know, mm-hmm. in case things happen. Right. Um, but because it's been so openly talked about, like it's not something scary because it's inevitable. Mm-hmm. Like we're all going to- you know pass yeah. away somehow we're not you know uh, gods <laughs> yeah. we're not mortal or immortal, immortal. um did that conversation was that uh when you guys were very young or is that a little later in life i think i mean i don't remember having a time where we never really i mean it wasn't like always brought up mm-hmm. but i think since we were old enough to understand it's always been a conversation yeah. again like um both of both my parents have lost their parents pretty young mm-hmm. um my dad lost his mom when she still had two little ones, like in elementary school age. Yeah. So he had to like, you know, face that. Yeah. Um, and so did, you know, my mom when right. they were, we, I never grew up with grandparents. Yeah. So I don't know that. So they always talked about it. Mm-hmm. There was never something taboo that you were like, Oh no, we don't talk about yeah. the dead. Like we always talked about them, mm-hmm. all the good things they did. And, um, so yeah, I don't know. No, yeah. Cause I know. <laughs> and I only asked that was because like most, uh, Latino families, they don't really talk about, don't like you said taboo a lot of that stuff is taboo yeah so i found it interesting that you guys actually had that open you know dialogue mm-hmm. towards that so that's a good because <laughs> i know my mom she would always tell us <clears throat> Cuando no estoy aquí, you know like el día que no estoy aquí, which to me i was always like well, where are you going you know like <laughs> we never really dawned on us until eventually they told us and they explained to us and i think we were probably like you said old enough it was maybe like you know 10 or something like 10 yeah, or 11 like middle you know. school age right, yeah, that's, yeah. What, that's where i remember yeah talking about death okay because so, also, we had a lot of pets growing up, and so pets die. Um, and so to me, it was never like a scary thing either because yeah. we I had seen my pets die or, you know, mm. go off to the farm. So they didn't make up a story about how I ran away. And, one time. Yeah. I remember one time, and uh, at least from what they've told us. Yeah. that but, but it wasn't alive when they... I mean, it wasn't dead when it left our house. Um, so they told us that they were going to give our bunny away to someone Mm -hmm. and they ended up giving it to someone who wanted to eat our bunny oh and they ended up eating our bunny but they didn't tell us that until like way later they didn't share (laughs) you guys didn't eat any of that bunny i don't know (laughs) (laughs) she was our babysitter so maybe oh wow yeah right here so forget put it in the fideo yeah (laughs) (laughs) you guys you guys still have a lot of or your parents at your parents house they still have a lot of like bunnies and no just Chickens and oh, the dogs okay. right now. Oh, yeah. right. But you my, guys did have a lot. Oh, my gosh. Growing up, we had a lot yeah. of pets. Is that why you, you think, uh, like, you and, well, not so much. Well, you were, well, uh, again, guys, I'm sitting here with, <laughs> she still holds a record for the Future Farmers of America <laughs> at Covina <laughs> High School. If you go to the Pomona Cal- Alley County Fair, you'll see that her name is still up there, right? Orange County Fair. Oh, is it Orange County? Yeah, it's oh, Orange okay. County. At the Orange County Fair, her name's still up there, Cynthia Morales. Yeah, grand champion the for... Grand cha- I'm sorry, <laughs> perdón, the grand champion. <laughs> for my veal calf, yeah. yeah. And I out, like, in the agriculture world, um, 4-H kids are, like, at a higher educational level of, mm-hmm. of raising animals because they've been doing it since, like, out of diapers. Yeah. Um, so I beat three that were like i was competing against nice. so that was like a big deal yeah, yeah then but i mean there's a lot of people that have won i'm not the only one on that no, board I know, but <laughs> you're sitting here in my studio <laughs> <laughs> no uh what do you think though like you guys having like animals at such a young age and being you know around them is that what your guys' fascination towards it or i don't know that's a good question yeah i think i think that's like because your sister's all over question. it too right yeah well i think i pushed her into it too Oh, okay. because <laughs> <laughs> i found so much enjoyment in it so i wanted her to like yeah. have that enjoyment and i was like oh you should do it Go but do to this it. day she still works in that right well she works with plants oh, okay yeah oh, same thing <laughs> don't tell the vegans that though <laughs> no yeah they'll get uh, upset what's funny about that is 
also go i guess like this is all tying in with death because i raised two pigs a veal calf and when i say veal calf like it's a it's a baby that gets you know Mm -hmm. eaten right (laughs) um and they would always tell me like because i loved them like they were you know you have to care for them in Mm -hmm. order to produce good quality meat Mm -hmm. (laughs) and yummy yummy meat yeah and it's uh i mean they only ate good clean things like we never injected them with hormones we never like put hormones in their food or feed or anything they got exercised so a lot of people ask people in ffa like how can you be so callous i guess Mm -hmm. when they get sent off to get slaughtered and i'm like well because you go in with that mindset of like they're meant for a purpose yeah you know they're all of our lives are going to come to an end and their lives are just going to come to an end a little bit sooner than yours. Right. Um, so, and, they, and they're there to feed someone. Yeah. It's not like they're just going to go kill them just to kill them. Right. And then later on, all the leftovers are going to be or hot dogs. Yeah. And <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> no, go ahead. I, I broke your train of thought. <laughs> well, you just feed a lot of people. Like my one pig, um, we split it up between all the, the ants mm-hmm. and we had meat for like, a I good remember that. year was it the pig was it the pig wasn't yeah. it also the veal or no we were so my we were supposed to keep yeah. the veal oh, okay. calf we weren't supposed to auction the calf off mm-hmm. but because i got grand champion you have to oh. um yeah i don't know why <laughs> that's just Wait, like you a got, rule did you get paid for that you got paid oh right? yeah yeah you get a lot of money and nice. it's like per pound and yeah. they auction it so like it can go higher and higher and you got um, paid but you were in high school right yep so you're a high school student getting paid for something like a school project. Yep. Huh. Does the NCAA know about this? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I get that. <laughs> <laughs> Do you get that really? Yeah. <laughs> no, um, but no, I not. Un- not unfortunately. Fortunately, unfortunately, I like follow the balls. Yeah. Just because the drama, like I just like live for their drama. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the balls as in the ball family. The ball family, <laughs> yeah. What balls are you talking about? I was thinking <laughs> sports, like the footballs, the baseballs, the you know, basketballs. That's, the that's ball what I thought family, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lonzos and the... Uh, I think Lamelo is the one that... Lamelo? Is it that one? The youngest one? The youngest one is, I think, Lamelo. Yeah, the one that like got penalized because he went to go play overseas and got paid yeah. for it. High school so kid. Now, yeah, yeah, so now yeah. he can't play in the NCAA, which... Whatever. Right. <laughs> he's still getting paid. I mean, he's getting paid and he's going to get drafted in the NBA. Well, he's matter. playing in Australia. Yeah, he was playing in Lithuania and now it's Australia. And then I think next year he's eligible to play Playing. in the NBA. Oh, and he'll get go. drafted. Uh, who knows how Their hype is too how much, high though. in the seat. Yeah. <laughs> we'll <but>. see. <laughs> yeah. I just live for the drama. I don't really care for the like sports yeah. life. <laughs> so you watch the Kardashians and all that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's my guilty pleasure. I'm sorry, but it is. And, uh, and Bravo is your no. Is your that's go-to? Li- that's just it's just the Kardashians. Oh, okay, so you I've watch, seen them uh, from the beginning. Housewives. No, I don't like the Housewives. Yeah. So like the the Ball family and like the Kardashians are like the only two like. So the two. Well, no. Okay, so I also watch Jersey Shore. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. I watched Jersey. I got in trouble for downloading illegally downloading an episode of Jersey Shore. What? Yeah. It was like season four or season three, episode number seven. Fuck that episode. Yeah, I remember because I got a letter and it said, uh, you know, you're down. You, it, may, it may be you or, or it's you or it might be your neighbor. And I'm, I'm like, no, I sent him an email. It's my neighbor. <laughs> I don't watch that. It was me. You know, I think the statute of limitations is over on that one, but it was me. Yeah. That's but funny. I haven't watched the new one. I know they had a new one, right? The new ones it. are way better. I don't. Oh, okay. I didn't really like. They're the like old adults, ones. right? They're yeah. Not, are they but still they're still drama. Dr- oh. they're still are they still drama. drinking like crazy and partying up at, yeah. at the shore? <laughs> yeah, they are. Are they really at the shore? <laughs> right now, they're at the shore. They were like in Vegas. Anyways, yeah, they're like <laughs> they're still there. <laughs> That's funny. So aside from those three reality shows, you're into true crime too. Yes. Just like me, I love true crime, and I had so real talk. Do you kids still say that real talk? <laughs> I don't know. We're the same, like, aren't we like, sa- no, no, you're not, huh? You're I'm not a millennial, huh? Almost 30, 38, 39, 38. I'm 38. Are you asking me? <laughs> yeah, I'm 38. <laughs> I don't even know how old Johnny is and like. What? Yeah. No. I just had to count like, okay, we're. He's only a couple years. Apart. No, we're eight years apart. Me oh. and him. Yeah, he's like two years younger than me, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he's like a year younger than Janet. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> okay mm-hmm. but like he's considered a millennial yeah and i'm considered a millennial and adriana's considered a millennial 
But he's a millennial just because he wants to be a millennial. No. Like, we looked it up because he really? was like, I'm not a millennial. I'm a gen whatever. Yeah. And I was like, no, you're a millennial. And we looked it up and it was like from 1983. Okay, good. I'm or something. One. Or 82 or something. Yeah. 82 or 83 to, two, no, wait, to 1996. Because I didn't know, like, barely made the yeah. millennial. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> crazy. I think we should say uh, Johnny's her husband. Oh, so, yes. By the way. <laughs> that's funny. Now, uh, okay, well. Going back to true crime. That's <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, I, I'm, I'm in love with it. I, I was watching. I, I was a huge fan. Still am of Law and Order. <gasps> oh, still, oh, favorite yes. show. One of my, one of my, and it's a, it's, it's been going on forever for years. Still new episodes. All of them. See it. The SVU. A, SVU. Yes. All of them. So I, sometimes I go, hey, am I weird? Like watching this shit? But then no, there's like an actual a niche for this. Like people like to watch this stuff. Now I'm thinking why? Why do we like to watch people's unfortunes, right? Because it's entertaining. Yeah. I mean, it, I don't know. Like, cause it doesn't. It makes me sound weird sometimes, and I might feel weird, but it's just I don't know. It's like entertaining, and not only that, but for some, uh, for whatever reason, I feel like it prepares me for if it was to ever happen to me, or some, <laughs> if I ever came across a situation like that. I'm like, I know how to take care of this. I watched Law and Order. It's like that you know? whole scenario, that scary movie scenario, where yeah. like, why are you walking in yeah. there? Like. You know, you're not going to walk into that scary attic. Well, no. Meanwhile, <laughs> if it ever happens to you, you'll probably be the same thing. Like walking into the attic. Like, let's go in there. Well, no. If nope. you <laughs> let, Okay. Hold on. Scenario. You, you're you at your house. You hear some weird noise or your kid, your little kid's coming over to you. And he's like, there's something going on in my room. You mean you're going to get your kid, get in the car and run, drive away? I'm going to go outside. You're not going to go check. Inside? No. Yeah. No. When, yeah. No. I'm a flight you know the fight or flight <laughs> yeah i'm the flight you're the Bye. flight yes i guess so i have never even tried to be in a like a fight or anything because i always talk myself out of it like yeah. i can't i need to go away yeah yeah. like or i'll just leave them there talking to themselves and i leave because yeah. i just can't i can't deal with it that's funny <laughs> so you're gonna leave the door open and like and take peace. off leave the door open and say hey somebody well i'm not come gonna leave the, the door house. open but i'll like close the door and like call johnny or call someone that's like funny. i need to leave I I get, yeah, well, hey, you're honest, right? <laughs> yeah, no, no. I'm gonna get my kid. I'll even, I'll even peace out to the the cat and the dog. Like, oh, you're gonna leave them behind? If there's something in the house, but we, it could just be like a, you know, the, the little kid's imagination. Oh no, you can't mm -hmm. trust it. You don't See, know. See, okay, going back to the religious thing. Yeah. If there are angels, there are bad things. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> That's why I can't do like, like movies that have to deal with like demonic things you don't like the exorcism and and the, or you don't like those kind of movies no it freaks me out i love those movies no. i love getting freaked out man i like jumps i love and scares. not being able to sleep at night oh, oh what's wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> those things are real no They're see real. i don't believe in that i think to me that and i've talked about this on the on the podcast before i don't believe in any of that like i to, i mean because i've never i've never came across it i've never oh. seen it never touched it i never i've never encountered a situation like that but i feel that i, I've, I feel that i never have because I don't allow myself to go there. Mm, maybe. You know what I mean? So now that if you believe it, it's going to happen. Because <laughs> the mind is powerful. I guess. You know what I mean? That's what well, I, okay. that's how I see it. Let me give you a situation okay. that I talk about. Like, I've told a lot of people about this. Um, so my mom is, I think she has a third eye. Like, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know why, but I, I know she sees things and I know that she hears things that me and you will never be able to, like ever explain what the the meaning of the okay. third eye is <laughs> <laughs> so for the, for the viewers <laughs> so the third eye is like you have like a for at least in what i've been taught because i've heard different things about third eyes but like where you see things in like the spiritual world mm -hmm. or that you experience things in the spiritual world, spirit spiritual world mm -hmm. i can't speak um and i don't know like that's just what I've been told. Yeah. I know that a lot of people say the third eye is like you have like a sixth sense. So mm -hmm. like, you know, something's going to happen. Yeah. Um, but I think it's that like you have like a, like you have your foot in somewhere else. Yeah. So, <laughs> so pretty much somewhere along the like you've experienced, you and your mom have experienced something where you, where Together. it leads you to believe that she's got the third eye. Yes. So well, tell many me, things, but well, tell I'll tell you one stories. thing. I'll tell okay, you one tell thing. Okay. Tell me one. Um, so me, and Adriana, this is when I was still living with my parents. I think I was still living there. Anyways, we're like the three of us were at the house. And <clears throat> if you are in my house, you walk in and the kitchen's right in the front. Yeah. And then the living room's off to the right. Mm -hmm. 
and then to the left are is the hallway and like all the rooms and stuff right so i was in my room to the left my mom was in the kitchen and adriana was in the living room okay and my mom goes "Ooh, that felt weird she just like walked by one of the chairs and i was like what are you talking about so i walk out to the um kitchen and my mm-hmm. mom's standing in front of the chair that my dad sits in and she starts going like this like over the chair mm-hmm. she's like i feel like electricity yeah i was like okay i want to feel it <laughs> <laughs> i thought it, you were a flight <laughs> no because okay there's a difference like okay. you can feel when it's bad yeah like you can feel something is welcoming and warm mm-hmm. or when something's like ooh, i'm not gonna do that okay so this one didn't feel scary like it felt like warm yeah. and welcoming um also on top of it my mom has always said that like our grandmas are always watching over us uh-huh. which i truly believe because there's this things that have happened to me that i should not be here oh wow yeah we'll have to get into that later <laughs> go ahead um so i go over there and i start putting my hand over it like yeah. the chair and it feel like my hairs like stick up you know when you rub a right. balloon and you lift mm-hmm. it up it's like that like it literally felt like electricity just going through like just in the little bubble like yeah. right there like a person was sitting in the chair and we told other and like come and feel it come and feel it yeah, yeah. and she's like nope I'm not <laughs> touching. she's like nope thank you and yeah. they can attest to this like yeah. so there's three of us that were there mm-hmm. so it's not in our heads it's not in my mom's head like i truly believe that there are you know people or things or whatever spirits yeah. like watching over us and then you know <laughs> yeah it's crazy i know and it but then <clears throat> i know there, there's been situations that i'm like oh shit what you know what was that you know but then you go back and think, right? And then, like, a scientist will be able to prove every single thing wrong, right? Like, that's mm-hmm. the way of some kind of a wave frequency. But just random? Yeah, like, right. we've yeah. never, ever felt it ever in, like, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, mean yeah. who knows, right? That's the thing. <laughs> that's the skepticism, mm-hmm. I guess, right? But, uh, yeah, I don't know. That That's just the... the one of those things where i just sometimes i don't believe you know and i don't i don't believe and i never it never (laughs) happens to me so that's why i'm able to watch all those scary movies oh no see you know and i just it's like for me that little asterisk on the side where entertainment use only you know when you watch when you read a horoscope yeah same thing like (laughs) i'm gonna watch a movie with the asterisk in the the bottom because it's never gonna happen Uh okay so (laughs) (laughs) agree to disagree because i'm not watching those things but going back to the true crimes now those are the ones that really freak me out because that shit does happen like when you go and you go back and like we're talking about this a couple weeks ago silence of the lambs actually no i was talking to your sister about it yeah silence of the lambs (laughs) based on like numerous uh serial killers right that's 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 the stuff that could happen like for real like that and see that movie doesn't scare me (laughs) (laughs) that's what we're we're totally different because i now i'll still watch it but it freaks me out because it's like people are that fucked up yeah that that shit could happen i mean i mean it, it could happen down the street yeah you it know could be happening down it the could street. be happening down the street someone's in a hole somewhere yeah that's Put the lotion on the skin that's pretty nasty <laughs> but it could it, no it's true though yeah like and then it could be someone that you least expect you know but like going going back to that real quick uh uh in here in Covina, it happened uh, in 2008. You know, we talked, we've talked about that before. Many of the viewers and listeners probably know is that Covina massacre. Now we won't get too much into detail because, out of respect to the family, uh, the families and the and of the of the of the the survival survival survivors and the and the deaths. I think there was three deaths, right? Or there was a lot. Or more. Yeah, there was because it was a whole family. Um, they were there for Christmas. It was a Christmas Eve event. Yeah. Yeah. So there were, yeah. what, what do you know about that? Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. So I was, I've actually talked to people school. that say that, Oh, that's my neighbor's. Yeah. They aunt were lived there down in that cold, cause it was a cul-de-sac, yeah. right? Which that house is, they, they, they took it down, right? It's well, not there yeah, anymore. It was burned down. It was burnt. Well, like most of it was burnt. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I remember being in high school and like the little girl was in middle school, <laughs> I think. The one that, the one that got shot in the face. Y- yes. When I opened the door. I think she was going to school with Adriana. Okay. Um, and I just remember like everyone being like, no, that didn't happen yeah. because we we're like, no, how can that? It's we're, Covina. Yeah. We live in West Covina. Covina. Like that's, that doesn't happen here. Yeah. And then once I like saw it on the news, I was like, oh, like that really did happen here. Yeah. Um, and I think maybe my fascination with that kind of like also entered into like the podcast and stuff. Cause, mm-hmm. um, I started learning like how can someone do that to their family like i think that's where it started yeah. where i was like how can someone just be just so like i'm gonna go and do this mm-hmm. um 
And so I researched it a little bit more and I found out that this guy was just, he was just not okay. Uh, I also don't want to talk about his name because he doesn't need the recognition because mm-hmm. he also like doesn't deserve it. Yeah. Um, but I, so I guess like in simple details, uh, he was going through a divorce with his wife. He knew that these people were going to be having, you know, their family, traditional uh-huh. Christmas party thing that they're having. And he dressed up as Santa Claus. And he comes in and the little girl that did survive was like the first one to meet him at the door and yeah. ran over to and give gave him a hug. Yeah. Which like to me, that was like the worst part. Yeah. And then, you know, he whatever you, you hear on the news, he did. Um, but what tripped me out was that he had like an escape plan. Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so he was going to go back to his brother's house, mm-hmm. I think, that he was staying at. And he that's where they found him because i think he like he shot himself mm-hmm. yeah. um but he had like laced his car in for it to be like an active bomb yeah so like if someone moved it or touched it or something it was supposed to like go off mm-hmm. um but he had like money stashed inside of his like suit and yeah like yeah. to me that's what was you thought about it so far out that you were trying to like escape because he had like plane tickets or well, something. well the, they said like the reason why he he didn't um and this is probably even more cowardly is that the reason why he didn't ex- ex- escape or he didn't fall through is because he was too burned from the flamethrower that he used. I mean, that's the only reason why he was probably just like, I, there's no way that I'm going to pass through customs and all that, you know, like, like sort of security in the airport. Yeah. Because he was bleeding all over, you know, third degree burns. That's probably the only reason why he shot himself. There's no way out. Yeah. Because lo- the police also think that he bought the plane tickets to like throw him oh throw, throw them, them off. off yeah yeah so they weren't sure if he was going to charter a plane like use just a like a private plane yeah um but like to to go that far you know yeah. uh i don't know that like tripped me out like yeah how, and i think that's what made my fascination like even deeper because i was like how twisted are these people mm-hmm. and that fascinated me not like entertainment wise it's just like curiosity mm-hmm. like why yeah just the why yeah, it's one of those where it's it's a, a murder murder or murders that happened that weren't was planned out. It wasn't like a happened in a, in a just kind of like a like what's it called like a passion crime. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's it's kind of it's scary, but uh, that shit happens everywhere. You know what I mean? Like right now, when you see all the shootings and mass shootings and stuff, it happens everywhere. Yeah. And it, and it is scary that that someone's mind can go allow themselves to do something like that. You know. I think this was also before all of the like. I mean, obviously you had the, um, the one that happened in the nineties, the school mass. The shooting. Columbine. Yeah, Columbine. Mm-hmm. But we weren't as it wasn't as bad as it is now. Yeah. And so I think it was also a shock to the community because of that, because we were like, this doesn't happen here. Not here. Like, yeah, it doesn't happen in Covina <laughs> or West Covina. Yeah. Yeah, because if you've been to Covina, like it's very old timey orange groves. Yeah. Um, obviously it's going to have its like bad parts, but even the bad parts there, like you go into LA or even orange County and those are bad parts. Oh yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. We have it. We have it good. I mean, it's bad, but sometimes some areas are bad, but we know we have it good considering, uh, LA, but, uh, you know, going, going back to, to that incident with the, the Covina massacre and, and he was dressed like Santa Claus too. Fucking idiot. But, um, uh, the divorce, you know, like, something like you never know what could happen in your life where you where it triggers something where you're just like that's it that there's no there's no more that that's the end of it you know like where you make you do something crazy like that um another thing that reminds me of is uh in 19 in the 1950s i think it was in 59 and we've researched we've talked about this and we did a little bit of research it was in in west covina that uh this man killed his wife and he was a, a doctor, doctor. He yeah was a doc- he was a surgeon he was really right? rich yeah <laughs> He was yeah, I think I don't know what the what the dollar would be nowadays, but I think he had like a fortune of seven seven hundred fifty thousand yeah. or something like that, which is back in the in fifty nine was you know that's a lot of money. It has to be a lot of money, right? Well, in order for you to kill your wife, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, and then so you did some research. Tell me what you know of the research, and we'll fill in. So the blanks. this story really fascinated me because also it, do with divorce. Yes, well, it also yeah it does have to do with divorce, but. Um, because it was a wealthy family, like mm. usually you don't hear that from like, I mean, obviously we've now heard stories, but back in that time, yeah. it was a big deal. People were like lining up outside of the courthouse to like try to get a seat to see the trial happen. Mm-hmm. And even I was, um, looking at some like 
interviews they did up for LA Times that um the little that well she was a little girl then she remembers her mom like dragging her to wait in line like three hours before the trial just to get a seat yeah, yeah. and they still weren't even able to get a seat yeah. um so what happened was that he was having an affair and he wanted to get a divorce from his wife but in california we have this law and it had already gone in place where when you get a divorce you have a 50 50 mm-hmm. you know split and on top of it she knew that he was having an affair having an affair so then she was um she was allowed to like keep some of his property yeah. or keep all of his property he mm-hmm. could or she could you know take potentially um so they wanted to avoid all of that and at first they tried to get a hitman yeah yeah <laughs> 800 from vegas bucks. 800 bucks at first right yeah so they gave him a down payment of like 350 mm-hmm. and then he came to covina but he came over here like they played his paid his plane ticket and everything but he came over here and spent the weekend with his girlfriend right <laughs> and then they flew back and then uh they called or he called him and asked him like hey my you know she's still alive He's like, oh, I must have killed someone else. <laughs> Just give me another like $800 yeah, and yeah. then I'll finish the job. Yeah. So they sent him more money <laughs> and then he like peaced out. <laughs> out of desperation, that'll that, that'll do that to you. you know? like, yeah, oh, yeah, but like, didn't you learn the first time? Right. He obviously didn't kill someone else. Like yeah. you would have heard about it. And so like that to me was pretty funny. Like that's what you get. Yeah. Um. And then, so then I think... Maybe you can like finish like what happened. Well, no, uh, I mean from what I remember after that, um, you know, they the the whole thing was that they got into that argument at their home, uh, which it was to me it was it was obviously it was planned because he parked his car at the at his country club, the South Hills Country Club, yep, and walked his way. Him and his chick, they walked the mistress, <laughs> they walked their way up to the house to go talk to talk to wife. And uh, that's when the, they got into that argument. Outside, nonetheless. Outside. <laughs> um, and he hit her over the head with the gun, thirty eight caliber. And as she was running away, he shot her in the she, back. I thought she's the one that that hit her. And then he was like, you need to like just finish it. Is that what it was? I thought that's what it was. Oh, well, maybe. We maybe, I was naming, for, maybe I was reading the names wrong. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was. I think he hit her over the head and then uh, and then he shot her. And I think the maid is the one that witnessed it. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, so after that, like, yeah, shot her. She was uh, trying to make her way to... Uh, a neighbor's house. Her, no, their, her in-law's house. Oh, yeah, because they lived across the street. Yeah. Now I remember. The okay, in-laws yeah. lived across the street. So that's <laughs> even crazier. Like, how would you... Why would you shoot your wife and then your mom and dad are down the street? Yeah. You know, but, but or across the street. So, yeah, she was making her way up there, and that's when she, she just died. She bled out. And uh, and then they found her. So then the... So he took off to the country club. And then uh, he flew. He fled. You know, he had it planned. He, they were going to meet in Vegas. Yep. And the but mistress, they somehow got separated. She was hiding in the bushes or something <laughs> like that <laughs> for like hours, oh right? While the police are there, the coroners are there, neighbors, the kids. Oh, uh, wow. They were all there. She, you know, she was able to like hide in the bushes. It was late at night. And then somehow she made her way to Vegas and that the next day. And then that's where they got caught in Vegas. Yeah. You know, I think he stole a couple cars to get over there or whatever, but uh what was crazy was that the trial like did you read about that no so they had the first trial excuse me the first trial it was a mistrial because there was a uh now again remember this was 1959 1960 they had a a black man uh, as a juror oh and then they had a hispanic as a juror (laughs) and hispanics back in the day were latinos today hispanics no more hispanics now we're all latinos so there was a, a black man and a latino on the juror and because the 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 defendants the lawyers they, they argued that these two that uh, this black guy these two uh minorities weren't going to get their say because of the white so it was like a, a, racial, a whole racial thing yeah right i did read about the racial thing but i didn't know it went it was about it, it was that so that's what it led to so mistrial you know <laughs> that's the defense second one was uh it was crazy the second trial same thing i think it was like 1960 a year later, it was also a, a, a deadlock. They couldn't make up their mind. The jury was like, oh, I don't know. We couldn't make up our mind. Oh, gosh. What the hell? Like, Because I guess his story was 
Did you read on the story? No. So B, his name is Bernard Finch. We can say their names, right? It's okay. Mm. It's 1959. <laughs> so, I mean, uh, I refer to him as B. Finch, right? B. Finch. <laughs> so B. Finch was saying uh, that she had the gun. His bar- his wife, Barbara, I called her Barbie. Barbie had the, the gun. I think that's what they called her too. Oh, did they? I think so. Okay. Because I remember, I think in the LA Times article, they, it said. Barbie? Yeah, they would call her Barbie. So Barbie had the gun. And Barbie was trying to shoot him, and he wrestled the, the gun away from her, and and he had to, he wanted to subdue her or you know keep her from attacking him, so he hit her over the head with the gun, and then as she was running away from you, right, the fuse situation, he shoots her in the back. <laughs> oh no no no! I'm sorry. His defense was that he threw the gun, and somehow the gun went off and shot her in the back, and then he's like, "Are you okay?" And she's like, "Uh uh, I'm sorry." So. A victim is apologizing to her assailant. So um, wow. that one 1960s. was sixties. Yeah. That, <laughs> <laughs> that one was deadlocked. Oh wow. And so then the third trial, and this is almost two two years later, the third trial was finally all right, after everything, the judge and the jury, everybody was like, All right, these guys are guilty. So they gave them a life life imprisonment, right? Yeah. <clears throat> they only served eight years. She was out. Rich and white. Yeah. <laughs> She was out in eight years, and then she she goes relocates. She's in I think working at a hospital in Pasadena, and supposedly she was still around, like in the area around Covina, West Covina, living under a different what name. The? Yeah. Oh wait, no, I did read about that. Yeah. yeah, that she was just like people would see her like in the grocery store, and they're right. like, "Isn't that her? Isn't that her? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I forgot her. Carol Traeger, Traeger, something like that. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I'm very bad with names yeah, in yeah. general. <laughs> Uh, I, I'm okay, but I forgot that one. But uh, so homeboy, he uh, B Finch, he gets out like a year after she got out. So he was only there. Like they were both served less than ten years yeah. for a murder that they were convicted of. Yeah. And, <laughs> so he moves to Missouri and still practices medicine over there. And he was still yep. able to practice medicine. Yep. There you go. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, those are two little uh, little stories that happened here in Covina and West Covina that. Again, uh, not, nothing to be proud about. Nothing well, to be proud about, but it's just, it is relate. You you can relate to it a little bit, you know, because you live in the area. Do you remember the Night Stalker? I obviously wasn't around. Yeah, for that. so I was talking to your dad about that <laughs> a, couple, a couple weeks ago. Yeah, uh, uh, Richard Ramirez. Yeah. Yeah, he I remember that. He was in San Gabriel that. Valley. I remember that. I, I, I remember see, I, as a little kid, I mean, I was very little, but I remember as a little kid them talking about how they used to have to hide like all the women had to hide and all this yeah i remember really that. i don't even but think you were like, bored no you were, I wasn't, you were born I wasn't even time. a thought no yeah <laughs> well, maybe you were a thought but just maybe not the right one no i'm just kidding no uh it was a. Uh, don't remember the year but it was like it had to be like 84 85 yeah something like that right yeah it was like 80 yeah between 84 and 85 yeah so uh yeah again i was only uh, i was a baby but i remember I don't remember it happening during that time, but I remember hearing like stories of most recent, like, oh, there's a Night Stalker and there's a Night Stalker. And, like, you know, it was Richard Ramirez. I remember a weird looking dude, man. I remember that sketch. <laughs> you remember the sketch? I mean, no. <laughs> I seen the sketch. People made shirts of the sketch. Oh, wow. It was like because uh, people would sketch, you know, describe the person that, was, you know, the, that would attack them or whatever. And, and they just, it was like the sketch art thing. And yeah, it looked pretty close to them, too, the sketch to the actual person when yeah. they caught him. But well, yeah, that was a local thing too, yeah. Yeah, because even uh, the guy from uh, Seattle who came down to Irvine, was uh, they just recently caught him. He was the... he like They caught him because of like the DNA test or something. And this was like a, a crime from recent crime or like no, years ago? No, he's a seri- serial killer and they like... From like the 70s. Oh, wow. <sighs> he's a really famous serial... I can't remember his name now. Well, Someone in the comments Se- will probably yeah. like... <laughs> oh, please do. If you guys do remember, please let us know. Seattle was that the green? No, that was in the Green River. No, that was in East Coast, right? Uh, the Green River uh, killer. No, I think that was East Coast, right? I don't know <laughs> because so like the podcast that I listen to, they talk about it, and they were following the whole trial once they like when they caught him because they had such a fascination with it. Yeah. And uh, oh, man, why can't I remember it? That's going to kill me. Because <laughs> he Don't was... Don't say kill when we're doing this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he was... So he started off in Seattle mm-hmm. and then he like made his way down to Irvine. Yeah. And Ir- in Irvine, he did a lot of like killings and then they caught him. I mean, he was old. Yeah. Like really old. He was actually a cop. 
Oh shit. Yeah. Wait, I think that is a Green River Killer. Is it the Green River? We killer? have to look at. I think we'll, we'll have to check it out. But I, think I don't think that's what it is. It's you like know a what? more. Most podcasters have a laptop right here. I mean, do you want me to they're search doing, it? They're doing research. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have to search it out. I, I, I my old podcast, I used to say that we don't Google shit. We don't do any kind of research, which <laughs> is a lie because if you see, this is all research. But um, no, uh, you, you can if you want to. Um, but I think it's Green River. It sounds familiar. Was he the guy that was killing, uh, women, and dumping their bodies out there in the river? No. So oh. he would... Uh, Hence the Green River. <laughs> he would tr- look for homes that were unlocked mm-hmm. and he would go in and kill... I think it was women. But he would like hang out in the houses for a little bit. Yeah. What? Yeah. Like he would be in their house for like a good couple hours. Yeah. Until he would like kill him. Because um, I think like a couple women had survived because he would just attack them and try to kill them. Yeah. And then he would just take off. But um, so yeah, he would like be in the house for a little bit and then kill them and then you take off but so like they all thought when they were trying to catch him that he had to be like either security like a, they all thought it was a security some kind office. of law enforcement or something yeah, no right? but he ended up being like a police officer that's crazy yeah um we're gonna have to we're gonna definitely have to google that one because that's something that i i can't believe i don't remember that yeah it, they caught him where did they catch him i think he was in northern california okay yeah but he was just like old like they had videos of him like coming out arrested and stuff and he was old and kind of big yeah yeah and then what's crazy is that um so serial serial killers have like this fascination with mm-hmm. their own crimes so they'll go to like the town hall meetings and stuff what? so like pictures were taken and he wasn't like a lot of those pictures yeah because they people were looking for him but those pictures are so old yeah. and like well, they say that that uh, all the, most of these uh serial killers they all go back to the scene of the crime yes and you know what? They mostly find at that scene of the crime. What? They don't find cigarette butts. They don't find snacks. They don't <laughs> find Dorito bags. They don't find beer bottles. They find cum. Yeah. Semen. Semen. Yeah. I say cum because it sounds nastier. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jizz. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, they find semen. Yeah. That because means these guys are, they yeah. get they get off on that. So there's a show on Netflix. Yeah. There's a show on Netflix of, of the, ah, oh, man. See, I can't remember what the show is either, but it's like the beginnings of the F- FBI section of serial killers. And mm-hmm. people didn't believe them that peop- that there were serial killers. And it was like the birth of that word. Yeah. Like no one had even used that word before. They were just saying that they were killing in mass amounts. Yeah. Um, but they never like tried to like connect or tried to like see like a pattern because they, they're like OCD. Mm-hmm. Like they have a pattern. They always do the same thing. Right. And they always have like the same reason why they do it. Um, and they always have triggers, how we were talking about earlier. Right. Yeah, they always have like the same trigger. So like they can go their whole lives not, you know, doing anything, um, maybe like killing animals and stuff like how they talk about serial killers. Mm-hmm. But there's like one specific thing in their lives that will like trigger them. And it, that thing will just make them go on this like rampage. Yeah, it's crazy. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. No, we know what's crazy <laughs> to me like is, uh, is sitting and... Uh, not that you do this, but you can say if you do, is when you sit back and you just watch. Because I'm a, I'm a people watcher. I watch people. <laughs> and I watch and I'm like, what's up with that guy? Or what's <laughs> up with that girl? You know, like they're so quiet. Like what what ticks them? You know, what gets them going? What, what, like how, you know, do you know what I mean? Do you ever, do you ever think about that? Like now knowing what you know about all these true crimes, like do you ever see that? Um, or so is it unfair to the person that you're, well, you're watching? <laughs> I mean, I also, I'm a, believer of like i won't give don't give me a reason to not like you oh uh. like if once you give me a reason not to like trust you or like you or have like a bad vibe then that's when i'm going to start questioning you right um i am an observer but i'll i'll give you the benefit of the be- the doubt first yeah especially with strangers like most of the time i'll create stories because i work at so working at disneyland right. um when i used to work in outdoor vending there are some carts that you're at that are just really slow. Yeah. Like it's just a slow day. And so you're not going to be selling too much. So all you're doing is people watching mm-hmm. and I'll just create stories in my head. Like, Oh, you know, this couple just came from a trip from Iowa. Yeah, and yeah. Like, they, they had like this whole plan and you know, they're having a great time. Yeah. Like that's where my mind goes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I also that's have cool. Like, no, yeah. you, should, you should write that stuff down. <laughs> I have very vivid dreams also. Yeah. Like my imagination has always been like really crazy. Yeah. That's probably the weed. 
<laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Maybe. But it was always since I was little. Yeah. Ever since I was little, like, I've always had really vivid, very, like, specific dreams. Like, I can taste things. I can feel things. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah. Do you ever write that stuff down? No. because You I don't have a journal? No, because I don't think people will care. Like, no, I'll dude, tell, that, I'll no, tell Johnny. No, no, no. <laughs> no th- you have to write all that stuff down. You got to write it down because... Uh, it, it could be a book one day. It could be like a crazy, the story of Cynthia Humorales that, you know. My crazy dreams. Yeah, no, seriously. Like, like uh, you never know. Like, I have this right here that I'm working on and it's just like pages and pages of notes from a show. But so it, put this in the right person's hand and they can make this a book. You know, uh, like. I guess. No, no, that's how it works. So yeah. You should definitely know. write that stuff down. Uh, Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> or record it. Like Maybe this. record it because I feel, I feel like writing it down is just going to make me not want to do it. And then yeah. I'm just going to be like, eh, whatever. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. my dad used to buy me a lot of journals. Yeah. He was like, "Oh, you should, you know, write your thoughts down, write things down." And I would start them, and there's like two or three pages. Like I can literally pull them out yeah. from my parents' house, and I would write like a few pages, and then I would be over it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I was like, "Ah, this isn't for me." Yeah. So now, now people. <laughs> but like now writing. I have a husband, and I just tell him my dreams. Hopefully, or, <laughs> hopefully he's writing them down for you. <laughs> he has a horrible memory, so probably not. <laughs> so you sit around there watching, making up stories of people. Yeah. But that's cool. I think that's really creative. But uh, are any any negative stories that you remember? <laughs> um, I have gross like, stories. Any weirdos? Like, no, because you know, I've been to Disneyland. There's weirdos over there. Yeah, I mean, you have the, like, extremists. Yeah. Like, you have the people that are, like... With the, ex- ones, with the buttons all over the place? Uh, have, like, they have a vest no, or a sweater? I'm a, oh, we don't, we, we, we don't talk about the 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 um teams or whatever like oh. they're what are they they're crews oh really oh yeah there's there's games there's over rules, there basically wow there's rules that you need to follow like you can follow them on instagram and stuff and mm-hmm. like join their crews and stuff but there's like um like the Pino- like not i think there's pinocchio um i don't want to get you in any pan. trouble now no these are okay. i mean you can look them up on instagram all like right. they're all over the place um you do have to pay like a fee like it's a club mm-hmm. it's not a crew it's a club yeah that's what they call themselves but yeah like they those are they're not that bad okay um i'm talking about the ones that are there like all day every day they watch every single disney movie i mean i'm a i love disney yeah but i'm also not like obsessed if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like you don't are, you don't have a, a a a Mickey Mouse P Well like they sticker <laughs> on your car? I have a DVC one. What is that? Uh, For Disney, the parking? Disney Vacation Club. Oh okay. Yeah. So I I am a Disney Vacation Club owner, which yeah. is like the timeshare. Yeah. Um, but it just makes Disney vacations so much cheaper. Yeah. And if you've ever been on a Disney vacation, it is like nothing else. Really? Yeah. I've never been. I'm not a spokesperson for Disney, but I do love <laughs> consuming Disney products. Yeah. Um, so I'm pretty much giving my money back. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. um, no, I mean, I can tell you gross stories because yeah. there's a lot of little kids and they get excited and they get like, like, you know, kids eat too much Halloween candy, run oh. into poles. <laughs> Running into poles. <laughs> Vincent ran into a pole at Disneyland. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Or- <laughs> you were there no oh you heard about it yeah because i i think i had gotten them the discount tickets yeah <laughs> lily told me right. i was like oh how did it go um vincent ate a lot of candy <laughs> and he ran into a pole and some <laughs> cast members came to help us <laughs> yeah. so you guys got a lot of that uh yeah we get a lot of so i work now i work at the storybook land ride mm-hmm. you guys ever want to come in my story is the best nice <laughs> storybook yeah. Where's that at what what uh, land it's in fantasy land okay it's Fantasyland. that ride with that big giant whale from pinocchio oh, okay yeah and you there's like a little boat that goes through mm-hmm. um so i'm i'm there but our line is an old school line because it's one of the classic rides mm-hmm. like one of the original rides yeah disney actually planted one of the bonsai trees that are there um so the the line is like the it's so small mm-hmm. like, you know sometimes you can like scooch over and someone can pass through right. their families mm-hmm. up ahead can't do that in our line oh yeah so we have a lot of especially in the summer people getting hot there's yeah. no shade we have a tree but that's like it yeah <laughs> little so kids you get shade for sun. like 20 minutes because the lines are so long over there yeah <laughs> uh, so like little kids are hot probably a little dehydrated because the moms or the parents don't want them to be going to the bathroom every second yeah yeah so uh-huh. a lot of what we call our code v's oh yeah v yeah for... <laughs> yeah i don't know if people are squeamish but yeah, so like there's a lot Vomit. of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but my favorite experience with that, and I say favorite because I thought it was like, I'll give you two. Um, 
I was actually still in outdoor vending. Mm-hmm. I was at a cart and there was a drain in front of me, like in the ground. Yeah. Just like in the middle. I think it's like in between going from Main Street to Matterhorn. Okay. There's like a little drain. So if people want to it's like, oh, yeah, that's what she was talking about. <laughs> um, this kid was I think he had just gotten off of Matterhorn and he had eaten lunch. It was like about lunchtime. So he'd already eaten. And he told his mom, like, I feel sick. The mom's like, no. He, she grabs the kid. And he was maybe like 10 years old. Yeah. Grabs the kid and puts him in front of the drain and just like projectile. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. All over there. But, yeah, but she knew to go to the drain. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. like, I like that. That's nice. a great mom. Because moms are usually like, oh, just go in the bush. Yeah. And she just knew to go like to the drain. Yeah, yeah. And so she was just holding him like by like the back of the neck, just like holding him. Wait, like you that. saw this? Yes, it oh, was nice. happening right in front of me. <laughs> and I had to call uh, custodians and... Which, by the way, they're like the best cast members there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they got to do all the, all the shit work. They got to clean up everything. Yeah, but they like voluntarily like, you know, you can change departments if you want to. But oh, these really? people like like being in that department. Yeah. So if you ever run into a custodian, like they're they're my favorite cast members. Yeah. They're the nicest Be all nice the time. to the custodians. Yeah. I Don't always thank them time. for picking up the trash, for like taking the trash out. I always thank them. If yeah. I see them in the bathroom cleaning up. Because if you notice, like Disneyland is always clean. Yeah always yeah and it's because of them like if it wasn't for them it'd be disgusting yeah yeah they probably need to beef up on the security though because i saw a video <laughs> of the, these people ghetto ass people and they were fighting oh no so, you remember that video it was not that long ago uh, i it was, was like, working a couple that ago. day no you were were you yeah but i wasn't in tomorrow i mean in toontown i was you know in fantasyland yeah. but i was working that well, day so what was the what was the the water cooler talk about that <laughs> We were just like, did were you there that day? I was there that day. Yeah, they were talking about it. Like, it was mostly that. If anyone's out there listening right now and they're like, what is he talking about? I think you guys could Google it. Just oh, put yeah, like it's, it's fight. What, so Toontown? Yeah, it's in Toontown. Maybe put Toontown fight Disneyland or something. Yeah, like it's, that. I mean, it was in the news and everything. It was all over the place. Yeah. Um, they interviewed like, I think, people that were there. Yeah. Um, I mean... Our cast members, as you can see in the video, are trying their best like to, to get people to stay away because that's our job. We're we are trained not to get involved. Yeah. Like we're trained to keep other people safe. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not. I'm like five three. I'm not gonna be going in there of course not. pulling a yeah. man off of another woman that's like, you know, bigger than I am. A six three man, three hundred and fifty <laughs> pounds or whatever. Yeah, no, that's not happening. Yeah. I'm not going to risk my safety for that. Yeah. So I'm going to try to keep other people safe yeah. as much as possible. And which a lot of people were criticizing the cast members. Like right. they weren't doing anything like no, because that cast member was an attractions cast member and she did her job. She was actually like radioing um, security, getting her manager there. Like there was a manager there. Mm-hmm. So like, I feel like she got bad rap for that because uh-huh. she wasn't doing anything, yeah. but you can clearly see her trying to be like, Oh, you know, please get out of the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cause what do you do in that situation? Well, see, not to and then and, and not to put any shame on anybody else, but those people that that are complaining about that, one talk about all the people around too that are just watching a and woman get her ass kicked and videotaping getting her ass kicked. Now, I'm not saying that I'm gonna be the first one to go over there and do something about it, but I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna try to do as much as I can to get first make sure my family's safe, and then probably fighting my wife to let me go get involved somehow, <laughs> but like try to prevent it hey man yo think about it dude and then if you know i can move well, i, I can there do, was you know, someone there there's a couple guys it, but it was a little late <laughs> it was a little late they yeah. waited a little too long but but uh, uh you can't put blame on it yeah like you said like what am i expecting this little tiny little tiny team over here to take she over was tiny. big dude yeah but uh, that so that so that was the main gist of it all the 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 talk was did yeah. you see it did you watch it yeah we were just like oh yeah it was you know it was crazy and I mean, we were also very concerned about the cast member that was there because um, we saw in the video that it was her. And then, um, but before that, they had talked about it. And like, I'm, I haven't been there that long, so I don't know her. Um, but like other people that I know knew her, and they're like, "Oh yeah, she was like really scared, but she did what she needed to do." Mm-hmm. And even our leads were like, "She did a great job. Like no matter what anybody says, like she did an amazing job. She did her job. What she was trying to keep people's because if you notice, no one else was near them. Yeah, like they right, were yeah. trying to like." It almost looked like a staged fight. Yeah, you know, because it was. Be, yeah, but yeah, to I didn't notice. I really didn't notice that. Now that you mentioned it, yeah, I do. I do remember that. Yeah, or else little kids would have been. You know, mm-hmm. little kids don't know. They're they're like little drunk people. They're just like running around <laughs> all over the place and just. Just yeah, doesn't matter with all that sugar, right? Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're just like wandering. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, 
I, so so that incident happened in our era where everything is videotaped we just talked about it you're instead of stopping it you're videotaping um do you remember any stories or any of any cast members that have told you stories of what happened back in the days before cameras were around so I think I can maybe tell you about things that happened during like grad nights. I think that was the most scandalous things that would happen <laughs> <laughs> when grad nights were happening. I mean, I don't think the younger because they don't do this anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't have grad night at Disneyland anymore. No, they're at California Adventures. Oh, okay. But they're also not overnight. You know how they used to be like yeah, close a, close overnight. a park and it's all overnight. Yeah. Yeah. So it's not like that anymore. Okay. They so they start off in the I think like the middle of the day and they're in Disneyland for like the beginning of the part. And then they move over to California Adventures for like their night part. So Mm -hmm. they're there all day. Yeah. But it's like during the day with all other people there. Yeah. (laughs) And I think they did that for good reason because a lot of like a lot of things happen. Oh, yeah. Um, Well, you think about it. There's no one in the park. A bunch of people just like me, my age group. And we're all here. We own this fucking town. Yeah. Well, and there's no city hall. So if you ever if you've ever been to Disneyland, city hall is like our hub of communication of security of if anything bad happens or if any guests have concerns or want to place any complaints or even even if you want to um, say something good about a cast member Mm -hmm. you go to city hall like that's where you go that's Mm -hmm. like our central location um so there isn't any of that so like there wasn't any back then no well not during grad nights during grad nights there's no one's there it's just security the vendors um cast members that are on the attractions and that's basically it <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i mean you have your leads and your manager well not even actually i think there was like one manager like at night yeah when usually in outdoor vending there's like three yeah um so stories that i've heard of like you know teenagers hormones um in the bushes <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> oh, okay um, no shame <laughs> at least wait till you get to the matterhorn so like cast so cast members that i used to work with they would hear rustling and they'd be like you need to get out like they would just they wouldn't even look inside they'd just call out like you need to get out of the bushes i'm about to call security yeah like you need to wrap it up we're done yeah hopefully you wrapped it up (laughs) (laughs) but yeah like stuff like that um i know that there's obviously people get like intoxicated of course um and other things so like these kids code b code b (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> uh but yeah so like stuff like that and yeah. i and so if but if that happens and if security catches you they ban your whole school so if one kid takes e for example a lot of kids were doing that mm-hmm. um and they catch you doing that that's why also we never sold orange juice during that time mm-hmm. Just, Wait, what? I don't know what it is. What am I missing? I don't something? know either. E and orange juice. Yeah, so maybe people in the comments can talk. Be, be, I never. Oh shit, we're gonna have to Google that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so something. I didn't, I didn't, okay. Because when I first hired in, the first year that I was there was the last year they did grad nights, and they told us that like, if anyone asks you if we sell orange juice anywhere, tell them no. Like we don't sell orange juice during grad nights. Oh, maybe the and high, I was like, high why? sugar. I don't know. <laughs> elevates the the ecstasy <laughs> i honestly i don't know yeah. um but yeah so like that was a thing and uh so like the kids you obviously know when they're tripping out or yeah. something's wrong with them so if one kid is doing it and they catch that one kid your whole school is banned for like five years oh shit yeah damn. so they can't go to disneyland for anything not even for like band damn <laughs> they can't perform or nope the drill team, the cheerleaders, yeah, none of you. all because of that one person. <laughs> but they, I remember they had chaperones, right? Yeah. The chaperones don't care. No. The chaperones <laughs> aren't following the kids around. Yeah. But also the, the I'm pretty sure, so the chaperones are usually like parents from yeah. kids. And I'm sure they're with their kids or like near, you know. It's just their kids and only yeah. their kids. Um, actually, it's funny because like how we were talking about it, my parents being a little strict. Um, my mom didn't let me go to grad night. And the next year, I ended up working that, like working <laughs> at grad night, yeah. which I thought was funny. Yeah. But I even told her, I have no shame. Like, come with me. Like, you can be a chaperone, yeah. and like, they you don't have to pay for your ticket. Like, they just you just go in. Yeah. Even my your mother in law mm-hmm. was uh, vouching for me. Yeah. She's like, just let her go. Just let her go. 
and nothing no but uh, i ended up working it so well, the next best thing <laughs> <laughs> yes. i got paid for it yeah there you go <laughs> let's let's end this show with uh if you have one a scary story from disneyland oh because i hear that it's just haunted there's some areas people died or whatever so <laughs> a lot of people dump their ashes at disneyland All right yeah yeah like everywhere mm-hmm. like in planters on rides mm-hmm. it's nasty and like, you that believe in angels and demons yes well but, but ashes it's, ashes are leftover vessels yeah. like to me the, that's nothing but deaths have happened at disneyland yeah. and you can you know research them technically they don't happen at disneyland but incidents have happened at disneyland to cause deaths mm-hmm. um and one in particular which spooks me out and i've worked night shifts um like from six to like two in the morning yeah it's really creepy by like the haunted mansion the um rivers of america Mm -hmm. a little boy had drowned there a little boy and his brother drowned there because the little boy the younger brother i think like fell off something somewhere on on tom sawyer's island when Mm -hmm. it used to be tom sawyer's island he fell into the water and in the water there's a current and it pulled the little kid down i think that's what happened and then the brother went in to save him and he got the brother out. Yeah, he got the brother out, but then he got pulled into the current mm-hmm. and he couldn't get out because no one came to get him. Oh. Yeah, so he like passed away there. So they say that you hear like like a little boy running around. Yeah. And you hear like giggling. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's... You've never heard that though. I've never heard or felt it i've never heard giggling i've heard footsteps mm-hmm. um but like adult footsteps okay um from where pirates of the caribbean is there's like a little alley there's like shops and then there's the blue bayou and then further down is the bathroom mm-hmm. so by the bathrooms there's an entrance and an exit for cast members to go in and out that's where our office used to be mm-hmm. so we have to we had to go through there all the time we hated walking through there by ourselves yeah because you could feel and you would hear like someone walking behind you <laughs> yeah it and was, this is all after hours like when everybody's yeah. gone well i mean i've only experienced it and then if you talk to like the engineers too that are there because they're there overnight working on like the rides and mm-hmm. stuff um i've heard that they play rock paper scissors to go into it's a small world why because that the dolls like they're creepy <laughs> without the music and yeah, stuff yeah they're like just, they're not yeah and wait they, they do rock they paper move. scissors to not go in there to like who's gonna go in there okay we're gonna play rock paper scissors because the, lo- the, the loser goes in yes Shit. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah like because the dolls supposedly they're creepy just on that with, with a song it's a small world <laughs> i felt i usually go on there to take a nap <laughs> You know, on a hot day during the song, like when the song's playing. Yeah, you just go in there, just take a quick little nap. That's funny. It's a long ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one in Pirates of the Caribbean. I like Pirates of the Caribbean. I just take a nap. Anything haunted over there? In Pirates? Yeah. I'm not sure. So there's actually a video on YouTube. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's real. I mean, it's a YouTube <laughs> video, but it's been out since like the birth of YouTube, I think. Okay. Um, there's like a, they're showing like security cameras from Pirates of the Caribbean to the Haunted Mansion. And there's like a white figure that walks out of the Haunted Mansion. Mm -hmm. No, walks out of Pirates and walks into the Haunted Mansion. Oh, shit. Yeah. And like, it looks like a person, like a white. And like the whole park, there's no one in the park. Yeah. It's like in the video camera, there's like no one in the park. And it's just like frame by frame. It's showing you going into the Haunted Mansion. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's crazy. (laughs) Oh, man. Well, uh, I love being scared. I've never to this day have been scared maybe because I don't allow myself to, but. Uh, I wish one day I'll get scared. Maybe a, no. someone comes knocking on my window. <laughs> Is no. that weird? Or? No, you don't no, want um, that. No, I, yeah, I, yeah, it's weird. I don't allow myself to get there. I guess so. It doesn't. I don't go there. Yeah, but See, I, I love the I love the the films for entertainment. I mean, I like the feeling of being scared. Yeah. Um, a little bit. I'm not as like much as like my little sister, like Adriana. Um, she's easily scared. Oh, yeah. I used to mess with her all the time. Yeah. It was fun, but that's mm-hmm. another time. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, in light of everything, I, I definitely want to say, uh, when, when I say that I wish I was scared, you just said it right now. I, I like the feeling of being scared, but like it's when, when there's people that are, and if you believe in all that, that are getting, uh, 
that are possessed or, or, or have something that's following them or attacking them, a spirit or whatever, something negative, a demon. A duende. A duende. We didn't even talk about that. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel for you guys. Uh, it's not, I'm not, I'm not, I might be laughing about it, but no, nah, it's nothing to laugh about. It, it, if it is serious and that's serious shit and then you, I don't want to make light of it. So sorry about that. But el duende, like you just mentioned, and we were going to wrap it up, but we'll go a little longer. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, our, our parents scared the shit out of us when we were kids. Maybe that's why we're so cool with it or we're open to being scared. I saw one. You saw a duende? Yes. I've never seen a duende. They're scared. I've heard shit in the house and then we always go, el duende. Oh, God. And then Don't we, ever el, joke about that. That's like legit. El duende is a gnome. So, you know, those little guys with the little, little caps. Now, your duende, did he have a little cap? No. A little he gnome was, He looked um like an old wrinkly man but like in a more like a troll yeah like a troll he was ugly um where did you see this one day oh man so <laughs> <laughs> this is like a family thing like okay. like this is legit yeah um my on my dad's side yeah my dad grew up in michoacan mm-hmm. who in in sacapo sacapo michoacan mm-hmm. sacapo is the state okay yeah and in sacapo it's very mossy very swampy um trees kind of like a fairy tale yeah. like imagine that like that's how where he what he grew up in he like, like a labyrinth type of thing yeah um so growing up they would go have you know picnics because they were a family of 12 and my grandpa i mean made a lot of money but they didn't make that much money to be you know going off and doing you know like expensive things yeah so they would go and into the woods and have picnics Mm -hmm. so my dad told me the story but not until after i experienced something then he told me the story yeah but i'll tell you the story first so he said that um they were on a picnic and that my one of my uncles uh goes off and my dad's like looking for him so my dad's like one of the middle children of the guys Mm -hmm. and he took care of all the little ones and so he went off and he um, went to a look for him like, hey, where are you? I can't see you. I can't find you. And then he saw him like crouch down mm-hmm. over like a log or something talking to something. Yeah. And then that all of a sudden he just hears like, shh, like, shh, like, you know, like walking, yeah. like someone running away. And then my uncle comes back and my dad's like, who are you talking to? He's like, oh, it was just my friend, like a, a gnome. Yeah. And the he was like, oh, I was just talking to my friend El Duende. And he's like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. And so that um, my dad was like, oh, that's like really weird. So growing up, he always like would talk to something. Yeah. And Your uncle. Yeah, my uncle. Yeah. Um, fast forward to when I would go. They live in Baja right mm-hmm. now anyways, by the way. Your so, uncle. Yeah, my uncle. Okay. A couple of my family members live down there. Mm-hmm. So we would go to Baja like every other weekend yeah. to Ensenada. And um. I would spend the night with my cousin because we would see each other only rarely and we were just so close like to this day like I love her so much yeah but um so I spent the night at their house and I got up to go to the kitchen or something and my uncle was sitting in the living room um so when I walk out of the hallway the living room's like right in front of me and then the couch had like an arm Mm -hmm. so I saw my uncle like this Mm -hmm. well I don't know if like whatever he was like turned over like this so I just saw the side of him. Yeah. I didn't see anything because he, he was blocking it with his body. Right. So I was like, oh, whatever. So I go into the kitchen and then um, I see something like pop its head up. Yeah. And that's when I saw just like this top. So you know how like cou- couches hit you like right here? Yeah. So it looked like he did this and then like turned over. So I just saw like this part of him. Yeah. It scared the ish out of me. <laughs> and I just ran back into the room and I told my cousin and she's like, oh, yeah, he sees he like to her it was like normal yeah he's like yeah he talks he talks to him all the time what the fuck yeah and then we went on another vacation with yeah. him and with him and like my family when we were older mm-hmm. we went to um it's in baja it's like in the middle of nowhere yeah. but so we went uh kayaking and <clears throat> we went to like this little cave and my uncle got off and he went off to like on his own. Like mm-hmm. he just disappeared. And he always does that. He yeah. always just like goes off and disappears. Yeah. And we don't know where he goes. But um, Adriana saw him this time, yeah. like talking to something. Yeah. And then 
she like comes to me she's like oh my god i think he was like yeah talking to his yeah, friend yeah. Yeah, yeah so like now it's like a thing yeah yeah he's just it's that's crazy <laughs> i i so then i go i ask myself right, if he sees him and he's talking to him yet you saw him your dad heard him yeah or heard something but you saw him is that the only time you've ever seen him when yes. it was around him okay so you're not you don't see things no 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 no. because because to me i'm like oh he that's just see he just has he never grew out of that imaginary sh- stage you know no <laughs> that thing is real So it, it's probably his pet he's carrying around a gnome i don't i mean they're friends i that's don't know crazy. that is insane <laughs> isn't... no i've never i've never heard of that yeah i mean i've heard you know i've heard of duendes obviously and like the stories that you hear but I never heard of uh and i've seen those videos on youtube they look kind of Fake. A little far, <laughs> yeah, a little far. No, they they don't. So they rarely let you see them. Mm-hmm. That's why my cousin was like, but I was also little, so I think they show themselves to like little kids mostly. Innocent. Yeah. Right? Maybe your uncle has a really innocent mind. He, still? yeah, he definitely does. He's always had one. Yeah. And I think, um, obviously, you're grown up and you have grown up problems. Yeah. But yeah, he's he's a very. I mean, my whole family is very. My dad's side are very. You've met my dad. Very yeah. lighthearted. Very yeah, like. Yeah. Don't think, don't, don't take things like too, too seriously. Right. Um, and he's just always been like that. So have you ever talked to your uncle about that? No, no. Why not? To. Why wouldn't he, has any, your dad has, I don't know. He had to have, I would think so. Maybe they're, you know, they're brothers. You need to talk to my dad. I do. I need to talk to, your dad. <laughs> to get your dad. Let me make a note of that. It's talk to your dad, <laughs> you know, but it, yeah. Cause it's like, why I would, yeah, I need to talk to your uncle. <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, he only speaks Spanish. Uh, you hablo español también. <laughs> <laughs> we could do this. We put subtitles on the bottom. <laughs> they have a very interesting childhood. Yeah. Because my my uncle was my uncle. My grandpa was a chemist. Yeah. Um, a very important chemist, like the head chemist of a, I don't remember what company it was, but um, I think they made paint in Mexico. In Mexico, mm-hmm. in Sacapo, and he would. So he was he was an alcoholic, but he would spend his money on alcohol. Mm-hmm. Um, he would make his own, like moonshine. Oh shit! Yeah. yeah. So my my all my cousins knew when something was happening because he'd be in his up in his you know in the lab du- in the dungeon, <laughs> the dungeon. <laughs> yeah, he and they grew up very well off, like yeah. for being a family of twelve. Yeah, they were a very well off family, but they have some crazy stories. They're not the kind of family that doesn't talk about things. Like everyone talks about it. Oh like, yeah. Yeah. Very no open. one's judgmental. Yeah. No one's judgmental. No one's like. Like, oh, you're a bad person because, oh, we don't talk to fulanito, sutanito, because, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. No, but that's what it's supposed to be like, because we were just talking about that, how a lot of it's taboo. Oh, we don't talk about that, you know. Hey, remember my tia? And she brought around her, her friend, you know, like, oh, we don't talk about that. You know? <laughs> like, come on, we know that's her girlfriend or whatever. Not that I'm not that my family is like that. I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying, for example. No, yeah. that I mean, but, that happens in all Hispanic families. Yeah. And I feel like not just his or not just Latinos, but like a lot of um i guess minorities mm-hmm. like that happens yeah. even in the black community that's like it's still a taboo thing yeah right you know you're it like demasculate de- demasculinates yeah. you yeah to like be so open yeah we can get into that some other time but yeah well, I, I don't cry uh i maybe one day i will but then that's why we have to break that cycle with our kids yeah because i feel yeah. like i don't want leo to grow up not being able to share who he is Mm -hmm. like i don't care if you don't want to cry in front of people but don't bottle things up because that's unhealthy yeah and i feel like like men in latino families like you're brought up to like no you need to be the strong person for everyone yeah the tough guy yeah Yeah. but i feel like that's not fair it's a work in progress over here well (laughs) Well, that's why i think that like now we're talking about other things but (laughs) like how feminism um focuses only on women when it should be focusing on everyone yeah. like i mean everyone's mental health at least mm-hmm. because it's not fair for men to like not be able to share yeah i think that's what feminism is it's just like everyone needs to be able to share their feelings and not feel like not be called a bitch because you're yeah. you know standing up for yourself yeah. and not be called a pussy because you're saying how you're feeling yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> no we we definitely we changed our word because we didn't want to say pussy and bitch as you get as you get older so we definitely changed it to oh he's just he's a little bit more feminine you know oh, see, you know what I mean like, yeah yeah I know but I know I'm I'm telling you right now that that's what I've I've changed we've changed it to that yeah we did de- we definitely do you need to educate us on that you were talking about get, creating a podcast with, oh, you know, well. with your friends and it's a little different topic but the beauty of having a podcast you can talk about whatever you want yeah. so 
that's a good that's a perfect thing is to start putting it out there and let everybody know what you're feeling what your thoughts and not necessarily that they should all do that but hey think about it take into consideration you know what i mean yeah the life could be a little uh, the world could be a little different if we all listen not, to not, each other yeah or not take <laughs> things so serious oh yeah that to you know me what I mean? yeah even at work like uh the other day like i had some things that i you know i know that i messed up and uh like obviously my lead got upset with me because they know my type of work ethic and the way that I conduct myself. So I knew that I disappointed that person. Um, and I felt bad for myself, I guess. Yeah. But then afterwards I was like, eh, whatever. Right. Like, <laughs> I mean, we're human. Yeah. And then I just brushed it off. And then later on he was like, Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. You know that I went off. No, he didn't go off on me, but he like, obviously he was, disappointed and i yeah. can tell he's like oh I'm, I'm sorry that i reacted that way yeah. and i was like ah to be honest i'm over it now yeah <laughs> like, <laughs> i mean it, no perfect thing is it, you you everyone's gonna fuck up you know no matter what you do everybody no matter what position you hold every no one's perfect you're gonna fuck up if you keep dwelling on that one thing that you fucked up on you're never gonna get over you're never gonna if you never get over you're never gonna get past the, no, the new one or even worse that you think that you're a failure and you just keep saying that to yourself yeah and then you never progress either because no. you're just well, like, oh, I can't make anything better than this. But you do have to progress too, right? You can't keep making up the same mistake over oh, and over, yeah. right? That's, that's another thing though, right? So, but it's good to mess up, you know? That's what I tell Vincent all the time. I want you to mis- I want you to make mistakes. I want you to mess up. Yeah. But I want you to correct them. Yeah, fix you know them. I mean? Learn from them. Yeah. Move on. Yeah. <laughs> We're all humans. This podcast has gone everywhere. We just, I know. I, <laughs> I don't know how I'm, how I'm going to put on the description. A through Z, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, but hey, thanks a lot for talking. It was fun. I think uh, also talking to a Latina, you talk about one thing, or especially in the like Madera family. Yeah. We start off with one thing and then we end up with like 20 other things. Right. <laughs> no, that happens a lot in your guys' uh, parties. But it's funny because like we all understand each other. Yeah. We're like, oh yeah, she was just talking about that. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> hey, I'm in on this on over, what, 20 years and I'm still like, yeah, Johnny what? gets so confused. He's like, weren't what? you guys just talking about something else? Yeah, like, yeah but we moved on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We might just come back to it a yeah. little bit later, but we've moved on for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. He's also getting used to names. <laughs> oh, we were like our names? <laughs> well, like all the cousins' names. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's a lot of them. <laughs> and it's already been like two plus years yeah. <laughs> of us being together or being married at least. Well, yeah, but you guys were dating for how long? Oh, that was, I don't know. <laughs> It was a long, it was a while. <laughs> Since I was 20? Yeah. We were like on and off. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There you guys are. And you met him at Disneyland. And I met him at Disneyland. Boom, there you go. If it wasn't for Disneyland, I wouldn't have had Leo. There you go. Leo. <laughs> That's what I bring it to. Yeah. Leo is her is her son, not a animal. Um, His name is Leonidas, too. Leonidas. Yeah. Yeah. It's a strong name. Yeah. <laughs> it's you met the kid he probably didn't need that strong <laughs> <laughs> no he's fine he's gonna go out of that but no yeah <laughs> we'll thanks thanks again for for coming on and talking it was fun sharing your your stories yeah talking a little bit of true crime a little bit of horror for this halloween edition yes it didn't seem like a halloween edition huh no because you didn't have your decorations i know up. Oh, shit that fucked up oh well now i have to have another one yeah <laughs> we'll do something yeah <laughs> all right well there you have it this fidel that's cynthia, cynthia. and oh you know what hold on i'm sorry I did say, I introduced her as Cynthia Morales, but her name is not Cynthia Morales because she got married. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I haven't changed my name. Oh, you have it? Oh, no. so then never mind. I didn't fuck up. But it's, Johnny doesn't like it. Oh, uh, does it? <laughs> no. Are you going to change your name? Until my, when my passport expires. Oh, okay. In like two years. <laughs> All right. I feel like it's just such a hassle. I already have my passport. You know, uh, Lily, never, she never changed it. And yeah. I don't, I don't care. I'm like, as long as my kids have my name. Right. I don't really care. That's oh, no, your name. Cares. That's your name. Whenever he sees something that's like Morales household or like family that gets, Morales. That, that's fun. To me, it's like, hey, it's a laugh. It's just a laugh. Because I do. We'll get, uh, sometimes we'll, like if it's her friends, mm-hmm. we'll get something in the mail because they assume that she oh. changed her name to, from whatever her name was to Garcia, <laughs> thinking mass might. So they'll get the Garcias or they'll, they'll say Lily and Fidel Garcia or Fidel and Lily Garcia, you know? And yeah. It's just a fun Well, I always laugh. see, like I always do, inter- like I'll say like, oh yeah mr mrs hanstein like that's our name um and when i talk to like other people when they like send us invites it's always like hanstein yeah from friends yeah just because i communicate that with them or else johnny would get annoyed it's always from like other 
other parties. So like our um, Disney Vacation Club stuff yeah. comes in as like Morales family. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's <laughs> legit, right? That's, yeah. Until you change it. Yeah. So, well, that makes sense. It's just such a hassle. Yeah. I have to go to the like social security office, DMV, change everything in my bank. It's not like easy. Yeah. So, but he doesn't get that. <laughs> Anyways. It, I know. No, I know. It's a hassle, but if you're going to do it, you got to do it. So whatever, just yeah, do it. Another if day. you're not going to do it, then don't do it. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> when I change my password. So Cynthia Morales, future, the Hans, future Cynthia Hanstein. Hanstein? Yeah. Hanstein. Hanstein. It's German. Oh, yeah. German. Hanstein. 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 Yeah. Hanstein. So there you have it again. Fidel, Cynthia. We're out.